Hi everybody, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com, the YouTube channel ChemSurvival, and Georgetown University. Now, I've been on the faculty here for about eight years, and in that amount of time I've seen a lot of students miss out on a lot of great opportunities to use resources and strategies to succeed in chemistry courses. So today I want to outline my top eight pieces of advice for new students coming into a new chemistry course. Let's get started on those now. Number one, the single most underutilized resource in all of academia, probably, is the professor office hour. Your university or your professor's department will almost certainly require that they hold office hours in support of a course that they're teaching. This means that the professor, the person who writes the exams, the person who gives you your grade, is sitting in their office waiting for you to come and ask them questions and have an intelligent conversation with them about the subject. So to not use that to me seems a little bit crazy. So when you come to office hours, be sure that you arrive with a good question that shows that you put in some effort beforehand and that will earn your professor's respect and believe me, we want you to come to us with those good questions because we love to talk about our course content. And guess what? When you really keep us talking, you know what topics we always tend to drift over to? It's the ones that we care the most about and that's what we put on the exams. So this is a great resource for you to get inside your professor's head. You should use it. The second one is this, review your graded work as quickly as you possibly can. When you get feedback in a, any kind of science course, or any kind of university course for that matter, that feedback is a useful tool for you. You know what to do next time to get an even better score. But if you take that graded paper and you just put it in the, in the drawer and ignore it, uh, you're missing out on a chance to use that iterative process, that cyclic process where you give some information and you get some feedback before you give information again. That's really how education works. So when you get that graded paper, it's not enough to just look at the number and then put it away. You've got to review your work carefully. My third tip is this. After you've reviewed that graded work, move on from it. Don't spend too much time lobbying for points over what you think you might have described or, or, or answered a little bit better than the professor thinks that you did. That is not an efficient use of effort because there's more content coming your way right away and the more time you spend reflecting back on this old content the less time you can spend preparing yourself for the next exam or writing the next paper so review that work but as soon as you're done reviewing it let it go move on my fourth tip arrive for your lectures prepared now I've heard many students tell me oh well the reading doesn't really help me much I learn much better when I just go in and listen to the professor first I summarily dismiss that comment. That is not the best way to learn for anyone. You've got to come to lecture ready to engage your professor. Lecture is not meant to be a one directional process. It's meant to be a dialogue. It's your chance to get clarification and your chance to steer what the professor discusses and get the best possible learning experience that you can. That's not going to happen if you just show up and say, hey prof, tell me something. You've got to be more prepared. To Tip number five, don't underestimate the importance of sleep. I've been there. I know what it's like to be a teenager or in my early 20s in college. I think I could push myself all the way through to the morning studying and that, that was the best thing I could do to improve my chances of a good score on an exam. But the truth is that that last few hours of cramming material in isn't as valuable as having a sharp mind when you sit down to take a test. So set a cutoff time, whatever it is for you, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., doesn't matter what it is, but set it and abide by it. Get in bed, get that rest, so that when you show up to take your exam, you're sharp, mentally focused, and you can engage the test more. Uh, comment number six would be this. Commit to a calculator. A lot of people don't think about this. Scientific calculators are complicated gadgets. They have a lot of buttons and inputs. Now, they're all essentially the same in the sense that they perform the same function, but those inputs can be drastically different. Right? The exponential button may be in the top left corner of one calculator, the bottom right corner of another, who knows where. What you need to do is be able to make entries into a calculator quickly and efficiently when time matters on your exam. So the last thing you want to do is show up to an exam with an unfamiliar calculator and then spend that critical time fumbling with the calculator looking for the right button to press. So choose a calculator that you know will be allowed on your exam and get in there and practice with that calculator only. Now a similar piece of advice if you're in uh, general or organic chemistry in particular is this. Get married to your model kit. 
Choose a model kit that you know will meet the needs of the course, maybe one recommended by your professor, and stick to it. There are many different model kits as well, and a lot of them uh, differ in certain ways that can be kind of tough to pick up on the fly. So if you spend all of your time preparing with one kit and then try to use another one on an exam, you're going to be slowing yourself down unnecessarily. So choose that model kit whatever, for whatever purposes that you want. If it's the biggest, the most colorful, the smallest, whatever it is. But once you've made your choice, stick to your choice. And don't let go. Tip number eight, when taking a test, use what I call the riser method. That's R-I-S-E-R. -E Read, identify, select, execute, review. Let me explain that. The first step you want to do is read the entire question all the way through. Be sure you understand it before you begin to work on it. The second step, the I, is identify. You've got to identify what you're being tested on. Get inside the professor's head and ask the question, which concept, which unit or section of the course are they testing me on here? Once you do that, you can go on to step three, which is select the proper tool to solve the equation or the question. Get the right equation, use the right table, whatever the tool is that you need to answer the question. If you've identified what you're being tested on, you can select the appropriate tool. The next one in the list is E. That's execute. That's where you're going to actually run the calculation, actually read through the table, actually draw the structure, do whatever it is that you've actually been asked to do. So you're finally answering the question in the fourth step of this process. And the last step is review. Once you've got your answer, always ask yourself this. Does it pass the smell test? Did I just calculate a negative pressure? Uh, did I just say that there was going to be some kind of a carbon with five bonds to it? Ask yourself if you've actually executed correctly. And that just doesn't just mean going back and looking at the equation. That means looking at the answer and asking yourself, does this answer make any kind of sense? Now, if you do that, you're going to do pretty well on your exams, I'll bet. I hope that you'll take all eight of these points to heart and have a great semester wherever you are in whatever chemistry course you're taking. Until my next video, I'll see you the next time. Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com, the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you on the next video.